you go into this intense relationship in real estate and then the transaction ends and it's it's almost like did we just break up how do you go about getting most of your clients where do they come from and i remember they walked into the room and they said hey we actually need a thousand dollars more for closing and i remember looking at my husband thinking do we have a thousand dollars more you know and she said well i'm from hgtv and we saw your listing online and loved the way it looks loved the pictures and so we wanted to see about featuring this home on our show again i'm thinking okay this could not this this cannot what's be, the catch yeah this yeah. cannot be real and so I, but i think the biggest thing i got out of that was on this episode of The Key, we talk to Meredith Buckland. Meredith is a longtime client of ours. She is so much fun to talk to. She's a real estate agent. She has so much information to share, um, so many fun stories, and I got a lot out of the podcast, and I know you will too. So without further ado, let's welcome Meredith to the show. Meredith, welcome to The Key. Thank you, Evan. Great to be here. I'm glad to have you. Uh, before this, we were just talking about the fact that we're matching the set. We do. We match... The set matches it's meant to be. It is. It's a perfect match. <laughs> All right. So tell me when and why you got into real estate. It's been about 12 years. I was in a school, private school. I was doing marketing and development, and that was the background that I had and loved it. And most of it I loved because I was able to minister to a lot of families that were coming in, help them with their children which mm. is a big investment and in focus in their lives. Yeah. And then I just knew at some point that it was time to start transitioning. And I always thought it'd be great to get my real estate license. My grandpa was a broker years ago. My mom had been in real estate for a short term. And so I thought, you know, I'd love to get my license someday. So I went and pursued it, got my license and started doing it part-time. And then at some point just realized... I have to be all in mm. one field, you know, give that confidence to that buyer or that parent, wherever I'm at, that I'm fully in. I'm not moon. This episode, just like every episode, is brought to you by Visually Sold. If you're a real estate agent in the greater Atlanta area, you need professional listing photos for your listings. Visually Sold is the best solution. I'm a little biased, but it's true. A few things you need to know. We do photos, video, drone. 3D scans, and we even write your listing descriptions for you. Yes, you heard that right. We deliver everything in 24 hours, so the very next morning you'll have all of the content that you ordered. All of our photographers are employees. They're not contractors. We give them all the same exact camera equipment to use for the photo shoots, so you can expect the same great results no matter which of our team members comes to your listing. You can book your shoot on our website in under two minutes. Just go to our website, vs.photos. Just type that into your URL, boopily boop, vs.photos, uh, and you can book a shoot in under two minutes. So thank you again to Visually Sold for sponsoring this podcast. Now let's get to the show. Lighting at something, it's not haphazard. So I jumped fully into it and uh, haven't haven't really looked back since So that was then. 12 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that's interesting that you, that we've seen a lot of parallels in marketing and real estate. Mm -hmm. It's they sort of they kind of go hand in hand yeah. a lot of the times. And yeah. having those skills really helps. Is that what you majored in? Was I was actually a communications major. And then partway through that, I added interior design. So it was Whoa. a combination, double focus. And so when I, I think coming out of that, it's it's pretty much what the gift set that you can use, you know, yeah. within it. So you're always communicating, of course. And then hmm. having that eye, that kind of vision for design, that helps tremendously to right, be so able to go in. Interior design, how how bad is this set? Oh, this is fabulous. <laughs> this is great. I love Stale it. One to yeah, 10, it's a you, two. you you hit it. You knocked it out of the park. So <laughs> just winged it. Yeah. Yeah. Um that's really cool. Okay. Yeah. So you so you majored or minored in interior design, or how did you study that? Yeah, that so I started communication. Speech was okay. my direct. Direction. And then partway through, I was, you know, almost all the way through with it. I had 30 hours completed mm. of 32. And then I thought, you know what? I think I actually want, I wasn't sure how I was going to use it back then. Oh, I'm yeah. aging myself, but back then it yeah. was like, what am I going to do with this? Am I going to teach? I huh. wasn't sure I wanted to do that. Um, so I switched at that point and I added interior design so it took me another extra year 
to and, finish. And I, when I finished, I had 32 in interior design and 30 in communication. So basically a double major, but you couldn't claim a double major at that point. So Got it. Where yeah. was that? Where did you study? I was I studied a school in South Carolina. South Carolina? Yeah. Okay. What yeah. part? At Greenville. Greenville, South yeah. Carolina. Okay. Yeah. That's really cool. And then you got into real estate 12 years ago. Yeah. Um, why? So you said it was kind of generational. Mm -hmm. Right. So like your grandfather was a broker. Yeah, he was a broker. My mom. And that's not really what propelled me into it. But that was just an interesting fact to me later that, Mm. you know, they they had also, you know, I'd seen that exposure and and their time in real estate was so different than my time. I mean, my mom, I mean, they had a book. And you would take that book yeah. and go to a client's home and show them. And there'd be a picture of a house, just the outside of the house and yeah. description. And that was it. That was and it. then you wrote a contract there and you went back. You know, it, So we, <laughs> it, no technology like we have, no ability like we have now. So. Yeah. So you said that really, that wasn't really the catalyst. That wasn't no. really the reason you got into real no. estate. Why, what was it about real estate that intrigued you? I think the whole, you know, because I love design mm-hmm. and I'm fascinated by home and I, I love communicate. I mean, I love selling people. Mm. You know, my husband would always say, you know, she can sell ice to an Eskimo. Yeah, but yeah. I don't mean to, but yeah. I just naturally find if I find something really neat or a good fit for somebody, I mm. want them, I want them to experience it. I want to connect them. And so yeah. that kind of was just a fascination to me to kind of connect people with a home and and find that perfect perfect match. So I enjoyed all of the elements of that. That's cool. That I was able okay. to do. Okay, yeah. So it wasn't like you weren't like, oh man, I just I just want to I want to sell something. It was just kind of interior yeah. design and, yeah. and the whole you, you were kind of in it were you, did, did you ever go to like listings with your mom when you were a kid? No, or? I didn't. Okay. I and I remember her being in it for a short time. She was a nurse. Mm. And she did that for a number of years. And I remember that. And I remember her for a short time being in real estate and not long at it, but I remember hearing some of her stories and, and what she you Got know it. dealt with within it, but she was only in it for such a small period of time. And so none mm. of that really was a factor. And it wasn't like I started out, Oh, I'm interested in real estate investment, or it really was truly like, Hey, I love design. I love space. I love all of that aspect of it. But then also I just love connecting people. You know, you find some of us are, we just love to share our experiences with other people and, Hey, I think you would be great at this, or I think you would, this would fit you. And Hmm. we're just good advocates of certain things. Matchmaking. Yeah. Yeah. So matchmaking. So how, how has the communications major slash double major Mm. helped you in real estate? I think, um, Tremendously. I mean, obviously, you feel comfortable, and in most situations, you can walk into a room, you can, you know, talk with the closing attorney, you can have a communication with a lender, you're talking with another agent, you're talking with that seller or buyer. Um, Part of, though, being a good communication person is being a good listener. And that ability to listen what is being said. It helps you not only to understand what is my client's biggest concerns and fears, and in the negotiation, it's really not coming at it with this full force of, I'm going to just do this and this and this, and there I'm going to bully my way into it. It's really listening to say, okay, what concerns does the other side have? What concerns does this agent have, mm. my buyer or client? And, and listening through that and figuring out, okay, How do we remove the roadblocks, the concerns, and we all get to the point where we want to be? Yeah. And being a being that person who listens, I think, can help in so many ways because it it eliminates so many of the concerns that you know people would encounter anyway. And then your clients, I think they feel like, hey, this person's really listening to me. Because this is a big emotional journey. You know, you just went through it recently. It's, It's an emotional journey one of your biggest investments yep. and you want to know that, Hey, I have this concern and you want to know it's not brushed aside and that person's really going to listen and, and help you solve that. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Communication is not just being able to public speak mm-hmm. one way. It's a right. two, it's a two way street yeah. and 
being good at both sides of that is yeah. is really really important. Yeah. I think that's something that I think a lot of people struggle with is mm-hmm. the listening aspect mm-hmm. of it because I think especially nowadays people's attention spans are just like gnats, right? right? They, they can't focus on one thing. Funny enough, even for me, this podcast has helped a ton yeah. <laughs> with that. Yeah. And I think people just getting more more practice speaking mm-hmm. with people for long amounts of time because mm-hmm. they don't do that anymore. Yep. It's all text. It's all yep. DMs. It's yep. very short, short form. Um, but getting good at that, mm-hmm. would you say that that's something that you know, new newcomers in real estate should focus on too is the communication or, or is there something more important than that that they should focus on? Coming oh, I think it? that's definitely a, a big aspect of it. Yeah. I think in, in general, our, our relationships with others, you know, communication is so key. And like you hit on it, we, we have the so much in screen and so much ability to kind of hide behind a screen, even dating relationships and everything. And I can't even imagine because when, you know, cell phones really, I'm aging myself, but cell phones, that was, you know, in my early adult life. So before then, relationships were written letters or phone conversations or in person. Yeah. And that ability to hear the other person's voice. And because so much gets lost in the virtual type tone te- because and tone you, you, you read into it everything else so yeah. you don't hear the warmth of that person or the nerves of that person yeah. and so you lose that ability the eye the eye ability to to read them and to understand sure. and see fear and concern and and all of that so yeah. i think communication is definitely a big goal that all of us should have to improve it and i've certainly even though i had a foundation in it It was something I had to keep learning. I'm still learning, you know. Mm. So there's times when, like I said, when I first started into real estate, it was this energetic, like, I love, I love to uh, negotiate and I'm going to go in there and this is going to be how it is. And then you realize, you know, with experience and with all of that, you know what? I can accomplish even more if I listen. If I try to help problem solve this in a way that works for everyone yeah. and there's empathy and understanding. And at the end, I think everybody wins and yeah. they, they come out a, a stronger. So I think that is very key. Yeah, for sure. Key, Alec, again, a key. name of the show. Yep. She said the name yeah, of the I show. I did. Um, so how do you how do you go about getting most of your clients? Where do they come from? Are they mostly referrals? Mm. Yeah, most of them have been. And I've been very, very fortunate in that. Um, you know, there's always that first, yeah. you know, client. And I think sometimes people, they'll call me and they'll say, hey, I'm thinking of getting into real estate. And they're so excited because they've seen some reality show or not so reality show. And they they have this image that you go to this office and there's this magical page of people just waiting for you. <laughs> and when you call them, they're just, yes, please come over and sign right. It, it, it I doesn't, was hoping you would call. I was hoping you would call. And it just doesn't work like that. So yeah. you have to have, you really have to have that first person or that first encounter and work really hard through the process. And then yeah then they might refer you. They might not be the advocate type referral. Sometimes mm-hmm. people are, they've had a great experience with you, but they're just, you know, they kind of move on into another phase and maybe years mm-hmm. down the road, they might say, oh yeah, I had a good real, you know, but if you can get those advocates working for you and they refer you, then you get another and another. And and yeah. that's kind of how I build. But I look back at some of the first clients I had and I'm amazed. I think, I can't believe they gave me the opportunity to help them with something so valuable. Yeah. And so that, I mean, that's a, that's a big gift. Yeah. And then from there, you just have to, you have to be a wise steward of that gift and you have to impact it so much that without a doubt, they want to share and tell somebody like, this is, this is what you need. Right. Because they know it helped them in that time. Yeah, that's how I started Visually Sold really mm-hmm. was just I did, you know, a couple of free jobs and my first I think two or three people were the catalyst for my yeah. next 20. Yeah. Really because it was just a referral 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 yeah. referral. And I think that's that's what's amazing about capitalism too mm-hmm. is like you're not going to you're not going to get very far if you're, you know, cheating people right. or if you're, right. you know, 
doing the bare minimum. Right. You're not going to get far. No. So if you put in a ton of effort, mm -hmm. they're going to refer you. Yeah. They're going to, you know, grow. Yeah. That's how you're going to yeah. grow. Right. Yeah. By doing a good job. Yeah. Um, so they win and you win. Right. And it's just, uh, it's a beautiful system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you ever had to, to sort of follow up and touch on previous clients to, to get a referral for them? Or do you just kind of like, if they don't push for it or if they don't want to, they won't, or mm -hmm. do you send postcards or do mm -hmm. you send mailers? Or, mm -hmm. I, I, um, I admire people greatly who, you know, they, they do, they do, um, you know, kind of consistently keep up with each client. Like, Hey, can you give me a referral? Yeah. I find I send out, uh, uh, use a magazine that goes out. So I do use that. And so that touch point is always coming out probably every two months into their, to their home. And it's just a, a magazine full of design tips or oh, cool. recipes. It's not my own, but it's part of a branding and it's a collective effort okay. within that. So I find that goes out to them. Um, with others, you know, I especially, you know, I've had relationships within the past. So I do try to, you know, keep up with them when they've mm. had, you know, something new in their lives or, you know, something that's happening. But I often tell them it's so funny because we go, you go into this intense relationship in real estate where, you know, you've had it, you're communicating almost daily, so yeah. multiple times a day. And then the transaction ends and it's, it's almost like, did we just break up or are we still friends? <laughs> right. Because you're not, you don't have right. that daily and there's not that need for it, but there should still be the need to, you know, to touch them in ways and to be in their lives in ways so that they remember you and they still have that, you know, oh, my, my agent. And they, they kind of refer to you as, as their agent because they built that relationship with you. But I, I'm not always like, hey, you know, I need your referral. Right. It's it's really more touching in and out of their lives as appropriate. And then also, you know, the magazine is one way that I do put out there. Got it. But that's probably the only overtly intentional here I am all the time. So tell me more about that magazine. What is it? What is it about? What's it called? What, how did you get involved it, with that? Well, it's a it's just it's kind of based on like a real media. And it when I got involved with it was a couple of years ago because it it, they kind of came to me and said, hey, we do this magazine. We can put your picture on it. We can mm. brand it to you. But then this magazine is really not about real estate. It's just recipes. And it's just uh, almost like something you'd put on your coffee table. Okay, cool. And so they they like that. You know, I've, I've heard plenty of clients that, and it may not trigger a, hey, I'm going to call this number. Right. But it's just something that comes to them. And they're like, that's nice. I love when your magazine mm. comes to my house. And, you know, I love to open it up because we don't get a lot of, you know, postcards and other things you might throw away. But sometimes a magazine that's actually got some useful recipes or yeah. useful tips for home care or design, you're more intrigued to open it and kind of leaf sure. through it and see it. And then my name's attached. So... That's just been one that I've done consistently. Can I say, oh, I've seen 100% return? I don't. I can't measure it that yeah. way, but I know that it's touching each of my clients, and I can add them as the transaction ends. I can add them to that mailing list, Got and it. then they receive. They always receive that magazine then from me. Do you know how what the what the dollar amount of sales that you've done is like total sales? Uh, for my lifetime, yeah. or or each year of in real estate? Oh, uh, wow. Uh, lifetime i don't know um i i mean i'm i'm usually in the five ten percent yeah. of my brokerage so i probably i think in terms of i i don't know i'm somewhere in the 12 13 million you know range yeah. on that so i'm i'm standard in that i do a lot of the um i'm not the big millionaire i'm the <laughs> i'm the i'm the everyday yeah you know, kind of new entry level. Yeah. Because I love all my target when I kind of went into this too was that first time home buyer. Really? Okay. Yeah. Why and why is that? Because I knew they were going to be purchasing again mm. and again and again and again. And yeah. I love the ability to help them and educate them through it. Not not from a, you know, I know so much and you know so little. But I remember when I went through our home purchase I didn't often know what I was doing. I wasn't mm. clear on everything. And then some things 
just didn't feel right, but I didn't know why yeah. I couldn't figure it out. Or I'd be, I was at the closing table with one of our first home purchases. And I remember they walked into the room and they said, Hey, we actually need a thousand dollars more for closing. And I remember looking at my husband thinking, do we have a thousand dollars more? You know, and it, are we robbing yeah. Peter to pay Paul? What's going to happen? Yeah. But we knew we, we just had to do it because we had to get this home, but it didn't feel right. But why didn't mm. it feel right? Um, other times we would be told, Hey, you lost your, um, you're not going to get the earnest money, even though this buyer walked and they shouldn't have walked. And mm. Why? Oh, well, I, I don't know. It's just, and you'd get these vague answers. So I thought when I go into real estate, I want to make sure as much as possible that that client knows the things that, you know, what don't you know that you don't know that, yeah. that I'm removing all of that. And I tell each of them, ask me as many questions as you want. Even if it's the same question over and over again, ask me it because I'm throwing so much information at you and you're not going to be able to absorb it all at once. So keep asking me. But when you get to that closing table, I want you to, without a doubt, feel confident about what you're doing yeah. and that you feel really good. Like I have been protected. I can trust this. I know what I'm doing. And there's no, there's no second guessing on love any that. of that. So I love that. You're, you're kind of... Uh... You're kind of the uh, there's a we I've talked before about the the story arc mm -hmm. like how stories are written right and at some point in that story the hero comes along mm -hmm. or the guide not mm -hmm. really the hero but the guide mm -hmm. kind of like the the Yoda mm -hmm. right of the and that's kind of what you're mm -hmm. trying to be for for new mm -hmm. buyers it's like I'm here as your source of information I'm yeah. here to help you along this process yeah. because a lot of people do have a ton of questions yeah um, and I'm sure I mean you know that yeah. I'm sure you've gotten a you know bazillion questions yeah. of relisting like that. Yeah. Um and sometimes the same. Yeah. Well, and it's okay because mm. you're they're getting such a it's just like a fire hydrant of information coming yeah. at them. And at the same time, they're trying to trust the entire process. You're trying you're, right. you're trying to feel balanced, you're trying to feel good. It's that okay, I hope I'm making the right decision. And when it comes down to somebody's finances and on their home investment, yeah. It feels overwhelming. Like, I don't want to make a wrong move. Well, I don't want to make a wrong move with my clients because at the end of the day, like, they have asked me, and it's such an honor to be asked to help them. And so I take that stewardship very seriously. If they've asked me to help them, I'm going to give it everything I have. What are some common questions that you get asked? A lot of, a lot of the questions, especially relate to due diligence, because when people enter into it, can I can I get out of this? You know, mm. and I, you know, what happens if this takes place in the inspection, or mm. what happens if you know with lending, if if this, if I don't get the financing? So, the concerns on the home, as as far as the safety and the inspection, because that can be overwhelming. Yeah, you know, you go you go to the inspections, and I I make it a point, and I think every agent should make it a point, which they don't always be at the inspection. Like, don't just schedule these things and help your clients and then hands off, I've got to run to the next. That inspection is probably the most important thing. And the reason is because you're going to get this report back and you've seen it, 40 pages, looks like the place should be condemned, but it's really the inspector is blowing up every little area and, and kind of saying standard language because they need to remove the liability from themselves as well. But when you're there in that moment, you can go to your client. Remember, we looked at that together and he's just yeah. referencing that back. Reassure them because again, at that moment too, they're almost deer in the headlights and mm -hmm. what do I need to look for? So I found that spending every inspection with an inspector that I trust, that I learn I'm learning. Okay. So when we shop for a home, we start looking, I'll start pointing things out before we make the offer. Like, did you notice this? And here's something here. And if I have a concern about it before we make the offer, I'll take a picture and send it to my inspector. Hey, we just saw this. Mm. Is this a big deal? Anything we should know about, but then being there at that inspection and walking through it and then understanding more and more about the reports over the years of doing it. Yeah. I feel like I'm able to then guide them through that point and yeah. kind of some, cause some come into it and they're handy people and they feel perfectly comfortable with anything. Others, they're not, and it's okay. 
but I just need to make sure that they're, you know, that concern's alleviated. And if I get back a, an amendment to address concerns from another agent and the report, and I know the agent wasn't there at the home and they're just sending me over this wish list of mm. Christmas wish list. I, I'll call them and say, were you at the inspection? Huh. No, I wasn't. I'm sorry. I had to. And sometimes we can't, we can't avoid it. But if I feel like they're just throwing over something and, and going crazy on the request, then we're, we're not going to probably find a good common ground because then now they've got a heightened buyer. Uh, and my seller is getting nervous and yeah. panicked. So, and we and they do become disclosures, but not everything is necessarily, you know, the same level, you know, within that. So we have to kind of get through that. So going to the inspection is, I think, really, really vital. That's interesting. So that's really cool. That's a really good, I think, tip for for mm-hmm. other real estate. It's mm-hmm. like make sure that you're at the inspection. Definitely. And just putting in that extra, mm-hmm. it's not really even extra. It seems like it should be essential. It, right? should, it should be. be just part it of should the be. Deal. I just know like with, I use one of my main inspectors and I, I used a group for a while and I would try to carefully select, not so that, oh, the inspection will go because I want balance. I came to one um, of my inspections and the mother of the uh, buyer came running out of the house and like, this house is terrible. And when I got inside, I could tell this inspector was a different one than I usually had requested. Mm. And he was not, he was not as comfortable in the inspection world as he should have been and well-trained. And so he was over heightening, pointing out things that I felt were not not even helpful to the situation. So making so, mountains out of molehills. Yeah, kinda. and mm. I called I called the inspection company after, and I said, please put this person's name on the list of I don't want them at the inspections. Yeah. I said I want well seasoned inspectors who are going to be balanced. I want them to point things out, but in a balanced way. Yeah. So then they sent the next person they sent to me. Uh, they warned him like. This agent has these, you know, exp- so he came out a little nervous, he said, and, but then he eventually started his own business and I've used him ever since. And he has a great reputation in the industry and, hmm. but I've watched him on every inspection. And often he would say, you know, not every agent comes to the inspections. And I, I was surprised cause I thought, well, I just thought maybe occasionally if your schedule's not convenient. But n- not realizing that they weren't as a habit typically, yeah. like that, that's where it's at. Yeah, that's where it's at. I so. think especially in in such in such a, I don't want. I'm not going to say oversaturated market, mm-hmm. but in a saturated market, yeah. right? There's a right. there's so many real estate agents now. Right. But those kinds of things I think will set you mm-hmm. apart because you're being so intentional with it. Yeah. You know, you're being you're sacrificing your time to to yeah. be there to make sure yeah. that everything's done properly. Yeah. Um, just like a, like a photo shoot, too, yeah. you know. Um, was it, and forgive me if it wasn't, yeah. was it one of your listings? I feel yes. like you told me this yes. at, um, it was a corner lot with a crazy big backyard, fenced in. I think this it, this is where you told me about this, but there was an issue with the sewer or something or a septic tank. It was. Was this you? At well, one of your, it, not at the listing, but it was like at a different. Yes. So I probably told you about where the septic hadn't been. There was no septic. Yeah. Or okay. if it was like crazy old or something so, hadn't been. So this particular home, um, and here was another, I, I think we're talking about the same thing, but yeah. this particular home, my clients went into it. It said it was on sewer. And and if this isn't the story, that's okay. This will be a, another great story. Perfect. But it was on, it was on sewer. And they said... And but I, I like to do the due diligence of it and looking around at all the other homes nearby. They were all septic. I was like, sewer doesn't make sense, but mm. maybe. Yeah. So I called down to the county. I'm like, let me just check this out. And the county was like, nope, we have no record of that home. I said, okay. So then I called the water company and I, I was like, hey, can you just tell me and verify? And they're like, this home is definitely not on sewer. They're they're not paying for it. It's definitely on septic. <laughs> So it was this dilemma, and I was like, I don't know what to do. So I told my clients, I said, listen, I'm doing some initial investigation. I'm going to just write it in that regardless that they give us a clear septic letter. So we'll yeah. confirm it. Well, the agent was like, well, it's it's sewer. Fine. <laughs> We're glad to sign that. Signed it. We moved forward. 
I called back to the kind of, I just, I just still, there was something that I was just like, I'm just not thinking this is right. And called back to the county and the sweetest lady answered. And I, I said to her, I said, I really need this piece of information for my client. Could you just check for me one more time? She went back and she actually, it's filing cabinets. I mean, yeah. it's not even yeah. on the system. And she pulled it out and she said, hey, I did find it. She called me back. I did find it. This home is actually, was on septic at one point. I even got that. She sent me the document. I called the person who had installed it at that point, the the whole septic company. He was no longer really in business. He had retired. But then we, I told my clients, okay, we're going to have a septic inspection on this. We're going to get out there. So they searched this whole entire property. We finally found the tank. Mm. Happened to be right by the deck post. Mm. They unearthed it. I was there that day. Yeah. Unearthed this lid. It had never been unearthed before. This was a home from 1970s. Wow. Unearthed it. Went through. I'm recording it with his, you know, his big um, pitchfork, not pitchfork, but his shovel. Yeah. He's uh, shoveling out down all the way through it, all the way through, like five <laughs> feet of sludge. And I'm just literally recording it. There's, you know, diapers and wet wipes and oh you name it all gosh. in there. And so all this time it had gone through four transactions, four real estate transactions, and it never had been caught, never had been inspected, never had been noted. Wow. So fortunately we had that written into the contract yeah. and then my client was able, they had to make full repairs. Fortunately, it wasn't as bad as it could have been, yeah. but for my client's sake, at least they were protected and we weren't just passing along a home that they then found out. Yeah, I have a septic that has not been, you know, pumped and that is that years. is the story. By that the way, the that oh, is, is the it? one. Yeah. That is the one. It, that it's I'm an amazing of. story. Yeah, yeah, that is wild, and that just goes to show you yeah. the attention to detail that you need to have. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, probably what sets you apart too is just ha is having that because if it was another agent, they might not have even thought about it. Like, oh, okay, yeah. it's on sewer. They say it's on sewer. Yeah. We're good. But you went digging. I have this relentless. Literally, you went digging. digging. <laughs> I have this relentless um, pursuit because I have to make sure, you know, I have to make sure at the end, because again, it's a stewardship. You've yeah. asked me to help you with something. And I, I take that very seriously. This isn't just a transaction to get, you know, oh, good, that's a quick commission. You right. know, sometimes I'm working with a client for years before it finalizes. And my goal at the end is that when it's finished, if they've been helped, if they've been serviced well in that, that's the biggest reward to me. Yeah. I obviously need to stay in business and I need the income and all that comes with that. But if I can't, if I feel at the end of that, that I haven't served them well, then yeah, it really, it's really not. A that's win your for why. Me. That's mm -hmm. why you do it yeah. right there. And that's, yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. You mentioned to me, I think, at another one of our shoots that at least one of the properties that you listed or mm -hmm. helped somebody buy was on TV. Yeah, it, it, yeah, and that's another great story. Yeah, tell me about that. So I had for you, which I have always known the importance of photography too for listings. I mean, and the opportunity we have, like I said, my mom used to take, imagine a notebook, you've got one shot, here's the exterior of the home, you know, here's some information. But the ability that we now have to, to market and everyone has their phones, they're always scrolling and looking. And the, the ability to make that first impression, which we know, I mean, statistics show us how high it is that most buyers come that 80 some percent of them fall in love with that home or want to see that home because they've seen it online first. I mean, that's the first. Oh, yeah. So photography was always important to me. I was never going to be that agent where you see me in the mirror with <laughs> you know, my own equipment. But I just wanted I wanted them to be done well. I wanted it to pull in that person like I love that home. So I had I had some great friends that were in photography, but they were they were also not real estate or you know that type of photography. They were generally like people and yeah. it's great you can you can sometimes do both, but there is a difference. There is a different angle and a different perspective that you're trying to capture with that. But they had done some work for me and then they had transitioned out and I needed somebody on one of my listings. So 
Enter you guys, Visually Sold. I came across you from another agent. And so I'm like, I'm going to give him a try. There you go, referral. Right I know, there, referral. Boom. I set up for you guys to come and do that listing. And you did. And I think that might have been one of the first ones we met on. Yeah. And great. It was a great experience. I'm like, this was really nice. I mean, we did the drone. We got the pictures of the house. Everything was fantastic. And put it online. We probably listed in general on a maybe a Thursday or Friday like we typically do. And I'm driving and I get a call. And you have to answer every call because you just don't know who it's going to be. So I, I pick up the phone and I'm trying to concentrate in traffic. And I hear somebody start to talk about, hey, you're listing at, and they mention the address. And I'm thinking it's just an agent wanting to schedule yeah. time. So I said, yes, go ahead. You can go online and schedule showing. We just started. I go through my whole spiel. Yeah. And she says, well, I'm from um, HGTV. And I thought, I, I, did I hear that? Like, what? <laughs> is this like a, you know, is this a scam or something right. funny? And she said, well, I'm from HGTV. And we saw your listing online and loved the way it looks, loved the pictures. And so we wanted to see about featuring this home on our show, My Lottery Dream Home with David Bromstead. Again, I'm thinking, okay, this could not, this, this could not be. What's the catch? Yeah, there's yeah. cannot be real. And so I do my famous, you know, send me an email with your information yeah. and then I'll look over it and, yeah. you know, go from there. Check that email domain. Check that. Yeah, I just make want sure to make sure legit. this is yeah. legit. And she said, would your client be open to us coming and using their home and all of that? So they sent me the email. It was legit. And they wanted to use it. And so David Bromstead was going to come and use their home as part of his show. And then she said, would you like to be the, um, also after we talked for a few minutes, she said, would you like to be the realtor on that episode? And I'm like, well, I guess, you know, I, I don't know what's all involved. Cool. So got to do that. But, it, you know, I remember letting you guys know, because I was like, you know, this was so key to how much visibility. Yeah your listing can get. Yeah. I mean, it's not just people locally looking. I mean, here's HGTV looking in our area and they want a certain look and they want a certain criteria and it pops out. Of all the listings, of all the entry-level listings, which were, there were numerous at that time, Yeah, that was the one they picked. And I credit it, honestly, to great, great photos. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. How, so were you, you were on the show? Did they I was, film it? And... I did. So, and that was kind of a funny experience. I walked in and there was no practice. There was no rehearsal. Yeah. And we were in a small little conference room with cameras all around us, no script. And he just starts and he's bigger than life. Yeah. And he, I don't know which direction he's going to go. And wow. we just start talking. And then later, I, I mean, that was quick, 15, 20 minutes. And then later I'm rethinking it and I'm thinking this is going to air. I have no idea what this looks like. <laughs> I suddenly felt like I was on some Saturday Night Live satire and like, oh no, yeah. I almost didn't want to tell anybody. So the day it was going to roll out, they finally told me like, you know, it's going to air such and such tonight. I finally told my husband, I said, um, I think it's tonight. And he's like, why haven't you said anything? I said, because I feel... I don't know if I want to watch it. I don't know that I want to... I don't know that I want anyone to see this until I see it first. And I'm really nervous. Like, I feel yeah. like maybe that was a bad skit that I was on. Yeah. And I'm not sure. I want... I didn't... Of course, you don't publicly want to look foolish. But then also your professional reputation. You yeah. want to seem yeah. like, okay, this is, you know... Yeah. This and is you never know. Professional. You never know how they're going to be editing. You it do and, not know, and yeah. so it was just bits and, and pieces of it. But it was certainly fun. It was a great. It's yeah. a kind of a great interest story. It's it was a fun experience. I, you know, I. It's not what I'm hanging my cap on of success, but it's. But I think the biggest thing I got out of that was just how important, how widespread again that visual first impression is out there. Yeah. Then you want to grab. I grab attention yeah. from it. It's it is vital. It is vital. <clears throat> that's why I mean that's why I got into the business in the first place. I yeah. Mean, and and the thing is when I when I got into business too, it was really not as popular as it is now. Yeah. You know, there really weren't, you know, people didn't really do real estate photography. Yeah. You know, it's I amazing. Mean, only a few people did. Yeah. You know, I mean this wasn't like decades ago or anything, right. but this was, you know, seven, eight years ago when I really started getting into it. And, you know, I noticed some listings I was, you know, I would, 
you know, during my pizza job, I mm-hmm. was scrolling through Zillow on my phone. Yeah. And I'm like, some of these listings have really good pictures mm-hmm. and some of them don't. Most of them don't. <laughs> right. Most of them don't. Right. Why right. don't more right. of them have them? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what is the barrier here? Mm-hmm. Why don't more people do this? Yeah. Um, so I kind of, I saw that little opening yeah. in the market and I was like, cause I was doing headshots. I was yeah. doing music, live right. music photography, trying to, Yeah. and it's really hard to make an income doing yeah. that. It's like really, really difficult, especially, you know, with band, like working with bands that are mm-hmm. starting out, they're just getting right. going. And, um, so I was like, I'll just, you know, I'll try to do this. I'll see what, I'll see what I can learn. I took a few pictures of my kitchen and then I called, called somebody that I saw didn't have yeah. pro- professional photos. I'm like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a real estate photographer. Um, would you want to have free listing photos? And she's wow. like, wow, right, sure. That's so I went great. And that that yeah. picture that I took of that house was like the one that was on my website for the longest time. That's amazing. Just happened to turn yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, since then it's, it's just, it's boomed. It's yeah. boomed. It's boomed. Everybody oh. wants professional photos yeah. now videos now yeah. drone 3d yeah. scans all of right. that stuff now well and i think that's the thing when i first met you because i knew it was great having like oh we can go and pick all of this it's all inclusive he's they they have the ability to do drone and have the license for it and they they can do all of these neat interior you know just you just had the setup for it and some of the photographers that i was using loved them dearly great photographers but it was their side job too so they weren't mm-hmm. always as able to be there during the day yeah. for the day shots. And when I needed them, Hey, I've got a listing coming up and they're like, I can't get to you until, well, you have to have that person that's there. Right. First time I met you though, I went home and of course, you know, since my family's tech and marketing and just that whole world is there is I'm like, I met the sharpest guy today and his, he's going places with his company. And I, you know, pulled up all of your stuff. And because I was impressed with the amount of detail that you had put into it, then just your energy, your professionalism. I was my clients after they would meet you and they were like, wow, what a sharp young man, because you're inviting someone into your home. You're coming in. It's just, you're introducing someone else. So even the people I partner with, I always want somebody that's the attention to detail, strong ethics, work and in character, and then just that they're going to deliver an excellent product. And so it's kind of a trust. I, you know, I did it on that home. Of course, it went to HGTV. So I was like, well, yeah, that's right. just, he's, thank you. HGTV. He's, he's done. It. He's mine. Credit, credit but it's just from there, it was just impressive. The amount of attention that you put in and detail, even to building your company and all of it. So that just gives me confidence. I mean, there's nobody else that I look to now. So it's like, well, of course I always tell people, well, I'll get you, you know, scheduled and we'll get photos and we're going to do this and that. And of course, a few of my homes, I've done some of the, the videos and the more cinematic approach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's always a great detail, but the ability to, to offer to a client, whether they're a, you know, a first level home sale or they're the million dollar sale, the same level of quality and experience. Cause why should they not? I mean, yeah. you same has been asked of each to represent them and protect them. So giving them the best yeah. and they love it. I try to do that with my signage. I get, you know, I said, when I become a realtor, I'm going to have those big, beautiful signs and all, because that I love that. I loved seeing, mm. okay, what sign went in my yard when I sold, you know, so yeah. having an impressive sign out front, my clients, they're you know, they're maybe their starter home and they'll call me up and go, Oh my word, your sign, you know, cause they, I don't think they were expecting that. And they feel, they feel suddenly like their home and they, and they themselves are valued. Wow. And, and then, you know, I introduce them to a great photography group that comes in and then I introduce them to a lender or lenders yeah. and, and inspectors and closing attorneys, all of these relationships together is yeah. what forms that just that whole picture of success. You know, it's not just me. It's, it's m- kind of my relationships with people around me that just yeah. kind of builds that whole confidence for them that they have been treated well and protected all the way through. So, yeah, that's exactly what I tell, you know, our people all the time. Mm-hmm. That's what I, that's what I try to tell, you know, potential clients mm-hmm. of ours is, you know, who you work with, who you yeah. choose to work with and you vendors and mm-hmm. et cetera, 
is a direct reflection on your reputation. Yeah. It really, really is. It, it says it on our website, yeah. right? It's reputation is everything. It, it really, is. really is. It is. And I think, you know, it's not just like, hey, do you have great photos? Mm -hmm. Hey, do you take, you know, do you deliver them on time? Mm -hmm. Are you on time? Do the photo shoot right. every time? Um, it's, it's, it's everything else too. It's the mm -hmm. experience at the shoot. Is right. the photographer intentional with the client, right. with your client? Because right. you're trusting us, yeah. you know, you're trusting us with that new delicate relationship and delicate time of their lives yes. too. It really is everything. And I, I love yeah. that you that you put so much emphasis and attention on that and mm -hmm. on who you choose to work with mm -hmm. for your clients that that definitely sets you apart yeah. because i think again a lot of people they don't they yeah. don't they just schedule this person mm -hmm. here this person here they don't go to the inspection yeah. it's kind of the opposite of intentional yeah. right but yeah. you your your attention to detail and your um intentionality behind mm -hmm. everything is what sets you apart i think yeah well, I, I hope so. I, I try, like even, I had a one client said, hey, can I use my friend? He's a lender and he's out of state and, you know, all of the negatives, you know, that you would normally. And I, I said to him, let me talk to him. I really don't typically advise this because I have to sell that lender too. I have to give confidence that these are trusted resources. Yeah. So I remember calling the lender and I said, okay. I listened to his whole storyline and everything with it. And I said, you have one shot. And if this gets messed up, I will never be able to use you again because this is so vitally important to me. I want each client as I hand them off that there is without a shadow of doubt that they are being well taken care of. I don't want to find out that you missed communication with mm. them or you missed the numbers with them. Oof. You know, I, cause I grill into each of my clients like, Hey, and my lender give them as much to the penny as you can. I do not want a big surprise. I do not want, you know, oops, because like it happened that. to me. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's sickening in your gut when you're there because, you know, none of us can just, Oh, you know, there it goes. Easy come, easy go. It, right. It's they're hard working, and even if they could, that's still their money, and it's still something that they have asked us to help them protect. So, I want I want every player in that to be responsible, and I want to be a responsible, yeah, you know, partner in that with them. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, I have one last question for you. Okay, we are almost done. By the wow. way, wow. Went so I, fast. I know. It, every Are time. Sure? I say this I every episode, but it just goes so fast. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You should um, move the hands on the clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How did we get there so fast? <laughs> yeah. So uh, last mm -hmm. question. If you had a billboard, mm -hmm. okay, this billboard is not some, you know, hidden billboard that almost nobody sees. This is like a lot of people see this billboard, right? It's like downtown Atlanta, right? It had one word on it. What would that word be? That's a tough question. Though. It's so tough. I know, especially when people like us are word, word filled. We tend to communications right, major. Communications. I would hope. I guess that. I guess confidence that that my client would have gone through something and have the confidence to know. Yeah. That their investment, their lives, everything about that was well taken care of and was stewarded well. And, and I often tell my clients, listen, I, um, faith, my faith is a really important part of my life. It is the reason for my life. And so incorporating that into my work should be natural. Yeah. I don't have all the answers, yeah. but I'm going to go get the answers and from trusted resources. So they feel confident. But then at the end, I, I literally believe the, words from James when he says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it liberally. Yeah. That's my that's my one big use that I have. And that I pray for wisdom because I'm guiding and navigating them through this transaction. Yeah. One misstep and and I've cost them. So I pray for wisdom. Yeah. I pray for the right things. And then at the end, I want them to then stand confident at that yeah. closing table when they're signing. Like I said, they're confident yeah. that everything was taken care of. Everything was well done. They feel good about it and feel well protected. Beautiful. I love that. I think that that, that word really does sum up what you give your clients. I think that's great. That's a great answer. 
Um, it's been awesome having you on the show. Thank you so much Thank for you, coming. Evan. Where Thank can you. people find you? Where do you want people to contact you? Well, I am, you can find me on, of course, Facebook or Instagram, Meredith Buckland Realtor or MeredithBuckland.com. Cool. Um, I'm there. Um, glad to, glad to help collaborate with other agents yeah. and somebody's looking for a home, but, and I can't say enough, truly Evan, about you and your company. You have been a big, big part of the reason that I am able to continue in the business and, and do it so well. And I couldn't do it without you. So I appreciate, I appreciate your attention to detail as well. And it always helps. Thank helps you. That means a lot to me. Yeah. That really does. And thank you for, we really appreciate you. My whole team really appreciates you too. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's thank been you. awesome. Thank it's been you, so fun. We'll have to do it again. We do. We do. All right. Thank you guys for watching. If you or somebody you know wants to be on the show, just send us a DM on Instagram, visually sold on Instagram. Um, otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you, Meredith. See you next You're time. Welcome. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks Bye. for watching.